Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Haddings from the National Weather Service in Riverton. This is one of the videos we'll be making to show you some of the day-to-day -day activities of how we forecast the weather. And one important part of that is collecting upper hair data with weather balloon launches. These are launched twice a day, 365 days a year, at around 4 or 5 a.m. or p.m. We're not the only ones that launch balloons, however. There are 67 offices throughout the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, and nearly 900 stations around the world that do the same thing. We collect this data, it's fed into supercomputers, which help to uh, create weather models to help us forecast the weather. And we also use it locally to forecast things such as winter weather, fire weather, as well as severe thunderstorms. And now we'll take you through uh, some of the steps in setting up the balloon launch with one of our employees. All right, we're back and we're joined by one of our indentured servants here. I mean, uh, one of our interns, Jason. Uh, he's, he's been trained to be a forecaster and one of his main duties is to send the weather balloon up into the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. So Jason, uh, tell us about the radio sound and uh, what's on your screen there. Start with the sound. All right, this is our radio sound package. This little turtle looking thing. As you can see, here's different sensors on it. This is for the humidity. Okay. This is a temperature sensor here. Internally, we have a pressure sensor and also a GPS. The GPS helps us determine uh, basically the wind speed and direction. Uh, if you ever find them, there is a mailing bag here and just some different information if you do find them. Now, are they hazardous to pick up? Obviously not, but are they hazardous after they, they fall out of the sky? So no some people are scared about that. Yes, these are uh, very safe and there are, there are some instructions you do see them, but they are safe. You can pick them up and you just you either take them to your local National Weather Service office or you can mail them in, but they are not hazardous. Pretty good. It's good to yes. hear. And it's all self-contained inside the battery also and the little radio. It's the radio sign as we call it. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Upper Air Building. And around here, this is where we fill up our balloon. This is a fully filled up balloon. It has about 1,400 grams of hydrogen in it. And uh, if you're wondering what, what kind of gas is hydrogen, well, it's very flammable. Think back to the Hindenburg, how explosive that was. But we do have a few safety uh, precautions here, so we don't have a Hindenburg every day. Uh, if you notice on the floor, we have these mats. As we're standing on the mats, it helps ground us. And ground us means that we won't spark as we're touching metal. And another little safety feature here is we do have brass fittings on everything from the hydrogen tanks I'll up to this little um, safety device that kind of will, if the balloon were to pop and we were to fill it up, it'll, it'll cause it to shut everything down. And um, we do have fire extinguishers around. Also, in this building, there's no heating and there's no air conditioning. So, when it's 20 below in the winter, we are out here filling it up in 20 below temperatures. But at least there's no wind inside. Uh, our last safety feature is there's a shut off switch outside. You just run, shut it off, and keep going. And then you have to call the appropriate people. But today was a great fill up, no uh, safety issues. So after the balloon's filled up, we uh, prep everything else. This is our parachute that we tied in the balloon. And it's actually designed to disintegrate. So once it lands wherever it lands, if no one finds it, it will eventually disintegrate. And there are a lot of places where people won't find it in this area. Yes. A lot of our stuff probably lands in the middle of Wyoming. And here we have some string tied to it. This was the string that eventually be tied to the balloon. And then on the other end, we have string that will eventually be tied to the sounding. Now, as I said, it's a fully filled balloon. It's about six feet in diameter. Once it gets up to about 100,000 feet, it'll be 20 to 30 feet in diameter and it pops. Now 100,000 feet is, is roughly twice as high as your average airplane, maybe even a little higher. Uh, then uh, the International Standard for Space is about 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles, and these go about 19 miles. So you can kind of get an idea of how high up these balloons really do go when they are launched. So our next step will be to tie everything up, and then we will get ready for launch. Thank you, Jason. We'll rejoin it at that point. All right, our radio sound is tied up to the balloon. Only thing left to do is just check to make sure everything is still working. So let's give him a call. Here we go. He's not ordering pizza, he's calling him. Mm. Yep, yeah, here we go. As soon as they answer, we can check. What's going on? He should have answered by now. Yeah, what is going on? Hopefully I'm not interrupting anything important in there.
and Jason's taking it out. I see how big the balloon is. Yes. You can imagine how hard that. You imagine how hard that's going to be to launch. Luckily, we have a calm day today. Exactly. When it's windy, it gets a lot difficult. All right, we got our clearance from inside finally. All we got to do is check the planes. Look left, right, left again, as they say. And we just let it go when we're ready. Release the hounds. Here we go. It's kind of hard to track this thing. Have patience, people. There it is. All right, now we're back inside and we're going to start collecting data. So, right here is our antenna orientation, meaning that we are tracking the, uh, the radio sound we just launched. And now we'll pull up a plot and see what our, what our temperature data and humidity data looks like. So, this is your pretty uh, standard called a skew T log P. Every uh, meteorologist learns about these in kindergarten. <laughs> and basically what we have is the red line represents temperature. And this blue line here is dew point. And as, as our uh, radio sun goes up higher in the atmosphere, we get this valuable data back. And then these little barbs over here are wind barbs. So we can tell what the wind speed and direction is as it goes up. Yeah, and the winds are light. That's very, very unusual for this part of the country, especially this time of year. Yes, usually we are launching in a strong, sometimes strong west winds, gusting 30, 40, even 50 miles an hour at times. And so the launch we saw today was a very tame launch, considering what we can have up here. Uh, basically, this uh, will just keep recording our minimum height uh, in the atmosphere-wise is 400 millibars, and that's considered a successful launch. But it can go all the way up to less than 10 millibars, or as we said, 100,000 feet. And once again, there is a, our presentation of how we do an upper launch here at National Weather Service Riverton. Hope to have more of these videos on the way for over the next few months or so. If you have any ideas for a video or anything you'd like to see, then feel free to drop us a line, comment on Facebook, or on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching the video.